Hello guys, in this video we are going to see an example of mutual inductance. Here this question is asking us to find out this small i current. Now here we have the circuit in time domain. We are going to convert this one into phase domain. Then we are going to solve for this current and after we solve the current in phase domain, we are going to convert that current back into time domain. Okay. Now when we convert from time domain to phase domain, this inductance will become j omega l and that's going to become impedance. Okay and when we convert this capacitance that's going to become negative j over omega c and this also going to be impedance now let's go ahead and draw our new circuit the circuit in phase domain so this is our circuit and here we are going to have the voltage source and this is going to be the impedance and also instead of this dot convention we are going to replace this dot convention with a dependent voltage source so let's leave a space for that one and also this resistor will remain the same and here we are going to have the capacitor and let's draw this line right here because we have a line in the middle and this is our middle oh my god okay here we have the line in the middle okay so let's connect this one right here and that's it and here we are going to have this impedance and also this resistance so let's leave a space for that one this impedance and this resistance and now let's go ahead and plug the values so first we are going to replace this voltage source and when we convert this voltage source from time domain to phase domain we are just going to have the amplitude and the angle since the angle is not provided this is going to be zero degree okay so this is going to be 10 zero degree and here we are going to convert this inductance into impedance and when we do that we have to do the j omega l in our case omega is 4 whatever the value multiplies this t that's our omega so omega is equal to 4 and if you multiply this one with 4 that's going to give you j2 so this is our impedance right here and also we are going to replace this dot convention with dependent voltage source when you do that you have to always put the positive sign positive sign according to the dot direction so for example if the dot is below this one we put positive here so this is going to be positive here negative here for example if the dot is here you have to put the positive in front and then negative after that right since we are having the dot after the like behind this inductance we have to put the positive up behind you okay so that's the thing we have to know and also this one ohm resistance just remains the same so let's put one ohm and this inductance is going to turn into j omega l and we know that omega is equal to 4 and if you multiply this one by 4 that's going to give you just 1 so this is going to be just j ohm okay this is j to ohm and here we are going to have negative j over omega c and this is 1 over 4 and uh, if you multiply the denominator by 4 because omega is equal to 4 1 over 4 and 4 cancels each other we will left with negative j so this is going to be just negative j and here we have 3 ohm resistance and uh, this dot here also this is below the inductance right so the plus is going to be below when we replace that dot with a dependent voltage source this plus is going to be below and minus is going to be on top so this is going to be an inductance sign okay like this and also this one should be like inductance okay now that's it now we are interested in finding this i current here we are going to create the mesh current so let's call this i1 and let's call this mesh current i2 but here we are interested in solving for i1 because we are interested in this current current through this one that is i1 is the only current going through this one right so i1 is the current we are interested in now let's go ahead and create equation using KVL and if you apply KVL for this loop one so before I do that I have to create the equation for the mutual inductance okay so mutual inductance is basically we have to look at what are the currents entering this dependent voltage source according to that we have to create the equation okay and also they have given the mutual inductance that is 1 Henry's and if we convert this one using J omega L this is going to become J4 
So the mutual inductance is going to be J4 and according to the current we have to create the equation. Now for this one you can see this is I2 going inside so J4 I2 and I1 is in the opposite direction minus I1 so we are going to put this current like put this one right here right we do the opposite thing we look at this one and put the value here so this is going to be J4 I2 minus I1 and now we look at this one here I1 is entering and this is J4 so J4 I1 should be here okay and that's how we do the mutual induction thing now we can go ahead and create uh, our KVL equation so KVL for loop 1 KVL loop 1 so I1 is entering this 10 ohm voltage source and going from negative to positive so this is going to be negative 10 and then after that this is going through this dependent voltage source and positive to negative so this is going to be just plus j4 i2 minus i1 and after that is going through this j2 impedance that's going to be j2 i1 and after this in, in entering this j but in this j we have i2 also so we have to create j times i1 minus i2 because i2 is in the opposite direction so i1 minus i2 and after that is going through this dependent voltage source this is going to be negative because this is going from negative to positive so this is going to be negative j4 i1 j4 i1 and after that is going through the 3 ohm resistor so it's going to be plus 3 i1 the whole thing should be equal to 0 so this is the KVL in the loop 1 and if we apply KVL for loop 2 loop 2 we are going to have 3i2 and after that this i2 is entering this j4i1 going from plus to minus so this is going to be plus j4i1 and after that it's going through this j ohm so this is going to be ji2 and after that it's going through this 1 ohm resistance so that's going to be 1i2 so we can just write i2 right here and after that it's going through this negative j impedance so this is going to be negative ji2 that's, that's equal to 0 now we have two equations with two and now now after that we can solve it easily right and if you solve for this one you will get i1 we are interested in i1 because this is our question i is the question and if we find i1 that's going to be the i okay so if you solve for i1 you will get 3.29 and the angle is going to be 9.5 degree ampere and this is in phase domain and if you convert this one into time domain this is going to become i of t that's equal to 3.29 is the amplitude and then after that this we have to keep this on cos cos omega is 4 so cos omega t 4 t and the angle is 9.5 degrees so this is going to be plus 9.5 degree ampere and that's going to be the current in the loop one i hope this helps thanks for watching